section in 2.4, which is a good thing. I think I told you yesterday, I said, guys, when we get done with the chapter 2 test, that will be the last thing that goes in on chapter 2, right? And that'll be the last thing that goes in on trimester number? One. One, of course. Okay, when does trimester end, by the way? A week from Tuesday? A week from Tuesday, so November, what would that be? 16th? Yes. 16th? So 16th is the last day. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get JMC updated hopefully this afternoon here a little bit, and uh, by the weekend you should be able to know what uh, what you still might have out and need to get back into. But uh, uh, for the most part, everybody's in good shape right now. Chapter 2 test, like I said, will be the last thing probably on the trimester, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. We'll probably, I don't know, Monday's kind of looking like the work day. Tuesday will probably be a review day. And then Wednesday, Wednesday will probably start that test next week. So just kind of have that in the back of your mind. Probably Wednesday and the, I don't know if it'll take the whole time. You guys really breaked through that quiz pretty well, didn't you? And there's not much more on top of what we need to know. So we'll review. If we have to spill into Thursday next week, we can do that. So I've been really pleased how well you've done in this chapter. So keep that up, all right, kids. Guys, 2.4 is kind of an interesting section. It's titled Interpretations of the Derivative. And we kind of talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, who asked the question yesterday about the uh, position function and what's the first derivative for velocity and the second derivative for acceleration? Whose question was that yesterday? On the assignment? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. Okay, so we had some units attached to that. The first one was position, like a certain distance at a certain time. Okay, and we said the slopes for that, that would be the velocity. And then we said the slopes of the velocity would be your acceleration. And we're going to talk about what things look like. Guys, today it's going to maybe be to your advantage to draw a picture of what's going on today, and I think you'll really understand or visualize what's going on with these problems here. But the question we're trying to answer today is, how do we interpret and illustrate the process of derivatives? Okay. So some goals for the day. We're looking to understand alternative notations for the derivative, okay. and we're going to use units to interpret the derivative today. All right. Let's start talking vocab first. This vocab is really tied to our first goal. It says understand alternative notations. Now guys, for the first derivative, you've seen the first derivative written a lot like, would you guys say you've seen this before already? F prime of x for derivative. You would say, what's well, the derivative? So we're looking for F prime of x. That's what we've kind of learned so far, all right? Who came up with the notation? His name was LaGrange. This is read f prime of x or the derivative of what? Okay, the derivative of your function, all right? It's going to emphasize the function's name, it's brief, and it does not use uh, any other name to it, okay? Now, guys, another notation for this. Sometimes instead of writing, I've always told you in the past, f of x is the same as what? Y. So if f prime of x is... Well, I should back up. If f of x is like y, then wouldn't f prime of x stand the reason that it's also the same as what, kids? Be the same as what? Or in this case, y prime, right? Because f of x, we've always said in the past, treat f of x like it's what variable, kids, in the past. Agree with that? So if I say I've got an f prime of x, that's also the same as saying you've got a y prime. Okay, it's um, another way to write it, okay? Now, things that are probably gonna be new to you, all right? All of these notations, I want you to understand, first of all, mean exactly the same thing. So if you see any of these right here, understand what? Okay, they're all talking about the derivative, okay? So this here says dy dx. If you ever hear me say dy dx, he's like, oh, he just meant what? The way you read this, it's the derivative of y with respect to what variable? X, you read this as the derivative of Y with respect to X, okay? Another way to write this is instead of, well, we said F of X is like what, kids? <coughs> so if I have a derivative of Y, that's also the same as the derivative of what? The derivative of your function with respect to what variable here, okay? Another way to read this is the derivative of your function X with respect to X, they might write it as D over DX of the function F of X, okay? And then there's this guy, Newton, who probably made it the easiest possible. We just call this y dot right here, okay? I doubt you'll see this, because this is mostly used where? Physics. Physics, okay? The thing I want you to understand about all of these right here, 
I don't really care what's in the meeting. I don't care who came. Well, I kind of care because it's my job to care about this stuff. The thing I want you to understand about all of these is what this. Anybody want to make a prediction on that? They all mean the same exact thing. They all mean find the derivative. They all mean find the derivative. Every single one of these right here, every one of these notations is talking about finding some sort of derivative. But in, in essence, each one of those notations means what? Well, they mean the same exact thing. Okay? They all mean the same thing. All right? So there's y prime, there's f prime of x. Those are going to be the ones that we talk about the most. That dy over dx is going to come into play when we start getting into integration and stuff like that. The df dx, I doubt you'll see much of. D dx of f of x, I doubt these last three you'll see very much of. The top three, these top three right here, are probably going to be your most common. All right? The top three forms of a derivative are going to be your most common. Okay? Don't cry, okay? All right. Okay, so let's run on to this example down here, kids. Oh, it's on the next page, actually. So why don't you flip there, all right? So example one, guys. Example one's going to talk about interpretations of the derivative. Okay, can we want to volunteer to read that for me? The cost C in dollars of building a house A square feet in area is given by the function C equals F of A. What are the unit and the practical interpretation of the function F prime of A? Okay, so let's talk about this, all right? So it looks like my cost right here, my cost C has to be a function of what variable, kids? All right. Let's just do this. I always think it's good. When we're doing interpretations of derivatives, I think it's a good idea to sketch something, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sketch a little graph like this. Okay. Guys, if you're building a house, let's say you're going to build a little tiny house, okay? Not too much um, square footage to it. How about the smaller the house? What do you think is going to be true of the cost? It's going to be cheap. Hopefully cheap. Okay, what if we start adding more and more floor area to it? Should go, what did you say? Nothing. Price should do what? Should go what? Up. So my cost, which is going to be a certain number of dollars, right, is going to be dependent upon my area, which is a certain number of square feet. Okay? The more area I add to a house, you're telling me the cost will do what? I think cost might go up. Okay, the more area I add, the higher the cost. Okay? You guys think that's a good visual for this description so far? Yeah. All right, so right here it says, what are the units and the practical interpretation of the function f prime of a? Well, guys, when I'm looking at f prime of a, aren't we talking about slope? Because I'm looking at a derivative for f prime of a, right? So the deal here is this, kids. It says, what's the interpretation? Well, guys, basically, it's at what price or at what cost per square foot is the um, cost changing? How quickly is the cost changing at a certain A value? So right here, I don't know. There might be a value right here that's A. If I draw a dotted line up here, isn't there a certain slope to this right here, kids? All right. So f prime of a, what are the units? First of all, my units would be dollars per what? Because we're talking about a derivative. We're talking about finding a slope, right? And the rise is dollars and the run is square feet, isn't it? So the units for f prime of a are going to be in dollars per what? Per square feet. Okay. A practical interpretation would mean that that's how quickly the price is changing. That's how quickly the price is changing at a certain um, A value. So for instance, I don't know, 
Maybe you're building a house that's 2,000 square feet in area, 2,000 square feet in floor area. There's a certain price that that's changing compared to other prices around it, okay? So what's its practical interpretation? Just how quickly or at what rate the cost is changing for a particular, oops, I spelled that right, particular floor area You want to get into notation a little bit more with it, but make sure you've got the units and the interpretation first. The way I wrote f prime of a here, kids, f of a just defined what function here for us. Okay, so another way to write f prime of a in this first example might have been the derivative of your cost function with respect to the change in its area. That would have been another way to write that derivative there, the derivative of my cost with respect to an area. Okay. First things first, do you understand the units in that derivative? The slope would be the rise unit over the run unit. Okay. And once you know the units for that, it's pretty easy to come up with an interpretation. All right. So I'm going to have you guys talk me through example two here. Any questions on this first one right now? Okay about that? You might need more time with that. All right, my friends, I'll leave it up there so you can still see that. Here we go, example two. All right, somebody different to read example two for me. The term widget is an economic term for a generic unit of manufacturing output. Suppose a company produces widgets and knows that the market supports a price of $10 per widget. Let P of N give the profit in dollars earned by manufacturing and selling N widgets. The company likely cannot make a positive profit making just one widget. The startup cost will likely exceed $10. Okay, so if we're running a company, we're selling widgets. What the heck's a widget? Is that something that you have, like, don't you have widgets for your phones or stuff like that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like the little, I don't know, you can, the way you organize your home screen and stuff like that, is that true? Like there's a weather widget that's a little bit bigger that shows up in just the little app tile. Sometimes you can do that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, either way, let's just pretend a widget. I don't know. What do you want? Should we pretend a widget's like a teddy bear? Okay. All right. We're making teddy bears. It's not. We're gonna name a widget. Okay. First question down there, what do P of 1,000 equal 500 and P prime of 1,000 equal 0.25? Well, that P prime of 1,000 is up there two times, isn't it? I cross this part out right here. I didn't need that in here. I don't know why that showed up twice. Oops. Kind of went a little too far with that. Hang on. This part right here. Represent again what, what function? Say P of N represents up here in our function if you read through it again. So based on the number of widgets I sell, that determines my profit right here, right? So I might sell, I don't know, maybe a hundred widgets, so P of one hundred would give us some kind of a what, kids? So P of some value is going to equal the profit. So when I come down to here, this first part right here. What does P of 1,000 equal 500? Is that a derivative or, a, or just the original function right there? So if I'm asking about P of 1,000 equal 500, that has to do with the original function. So what's that 1,000 represent there, kids, in this situation? Number of widgets. And if the number of widgets we sold 1,000, P of 1,000 equal 500, what's the 500 represent? 
Okay, so could I say $500 is the profit for what here? 1,000 widgets. Okay, so go ahead and start writing that. I'll get that here while I get Ashley's notes here. So the profit of, the profit of $500 comes from how many widgets sold? Okay, or I might say 1,000 widgets sold gets us a profit of how much? Okay. Is that first one? We'll say uh, P of 1,000 equal 500 means a profit of $500. A profit of $500 for selling how many widgets? We understand the practical terms of that first one. P of 1,000 equals 2,500. Okay, now, the part that I'm concerned about. What does P prime of 1,000 equal 0.25 mean? Okay, so it's kind of like saying this. I'm going to draw a graph down here again. The more widgets I sell, what's going to happen to my profit, friend? It's going to go up, right? So I'm going to let N be down here. That's going to be the number sold, right? And then uh, P of N would be right here. Wouldn't that be our profit in dollars here, kids? Dollars over N is going to be our quantity as number sold, right? The more that I sell, what's going to happen to the profit, kids? It might be a graph. I don't know what the graph looks like. Maybe it looks like this. I don't know. Well, maybe that's a good graph for me. All right? So the question then becomes, my friends, what does P prime of 1,000 equal 0.25 mean? Well, if I got the 1,000, say, maybe right here. supposed to be looking at if we're dealing with P prime? The slope. Okay, I want the instantaneous rate of change right here. And if there was a tangent line right here, okay, that would say, well, if I'm at a thousand cups sold, the rate of change for like the next one sold, 1,001, your profit would go up by how much? By a quarter, 25 cents for each additional one sold, right? Okay, at that point. So this means P prime of 1,000 equals 0.25. That means your profit is going up at a rate of 25 cents per item sold when you're at 1,000. Widgets, okay? So how quickly is the profit changing once I've sold the 1,000? It's going up by how much again? Okay, so I would say at 1,000 widgets, profit increases by here we go, 25 cents per number sold or per widget, right? Now, this next one is an interesting one to me because <clears throat> the big word that's out here on this, kids, is what? Okay. Kids, uh, here's what we know. 
We know that I've sold a thousand cups already, or I'm sorry, a thousand widgets already, right? When we sold a thousand widgets, what was our, our profit? Okay. Well, we want to approximate not P of 1,000, we want P of what? Okay, so here's how we would do this. We know that um, P of 1,000 is equal to $500, right? Those first 1,000 widgets that we sold got us a $500 profit. How many more widgets do I have to sell there to determine or approximate our new profit? It's 100. 100. Okay, so we need to plan for... Widgets 1,001 to 1,100. Okay. Now, again, is this telling us to give an exact value or approximate? And we can only approximate off of what we know. At 1,000 cups, what was the rate of change of our profit? How much was our profit changing at 1,000? 25 cents per widget, right? So one can only assume. One can only assume then that that's all the information I know. If this is the only rate of change I know, then I can only assume a rate of change of 25 cents per widget from widget 1001 to widget number what? 1100, right? Well, guys, how many widgets exist from 1001 up to 1100? If you were counting all of them, how many would there be? Wouldn't there be 100 of them? Because the first 1,000 got us a profit of $500, right? Okay, now, beyond that, we're getting a quarter per widget, right? Based on the slope there. So we're going to assume we're getting a quarter per widget, a quarter per widget beyond 1,000. So wouldn't I have to take a quarter times how many remaining widgets? Okay, so this means take your 0.25 times 100, okay? So what is 0.25 times 100? 25. 25. And so another 100 widgets, we're going to have an extra... $25 based on the rate of change. You all agree with that? Okay, so this would be $25. So here's the situation, kids. If 1,000 cups got us $500 profit, the next 100 got us $25 profit, what's the profit going to be on approximately 1,100 cups then? Or I'm sorry, widgets. Why do I keep saying cups? Okay, so this would be... Approximately what profit, kids? Yeah, we have five hundred dollars for the first thousand. We think that rate of change at a thousand up to eleven hundred is about 0.25, which gives us twenty-five dollars more. So, good approximation for P of eleven hundred would be five hundred and twenty-five dollars here. Okay, I know that's all squeezed in up there, so hopefully you're paying attention on everything we're talking there. That's really what that second part would mean. P of 1,100 cups, I'm sorry, 1,100 widgets. If I say cups one more time, you can kiss me. Where's my cup of coffee? You said cups. I didn't say cups. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now guys, there's a lot happening in this here, but again, a lot of it for us is to understand what is this question really asking for here. Are they asking for just like an initial value? Are they asking for some value? Are they asking for a derivative or a rate of change in here? This is the things, um, these are the things that you're going to see moving forward, and I think that uh, this will make better sense by the time we get through this here today, okay? Questions about example two right now? All right, how about a volunteer to read three for me today? <laughs> Suppose the cost of extracting T tons um, of one form of copper mine is C equals F of T. So my, my cost uh, is going to be dependent upon the number of tons that are extracted from a mine. The C is going to be in dollars. What does it mean to say F prime of 4,000 equals what? Okay. All right, am I looking for a value or am I looking for a rate of change here? First question. I'm looking for a rate of change because they want to know what here, kids. Okay, here's what I'm going to do, kids. 
I'm going to draw a graph of what's really going on here. So kids, we're out of mine. We're mining what? The more copper I mine, what's going to happen to the cost of that copper for us? The more and more I work at getting that copper. If I send people out and say, you guys, your job today is to look at copper, and I'm running the company. There's a cost to me. The more those guys work and the more those guys get, what's going to happen to my cost? i got to pay those people. Okay. So the more that they mine, what's happening to my cost to my employees? Going up, right? Okay, so they're going to extract a certain number of tons here. That's going to cost me some money to do that. Now, I want to make money, and that's a different graph and a different story entirely. But guys, if they, I kind of guess if they extract zero tons, they probably might have to pay them a little bit for working. So maybe it starts like this. Maybe my graph goes like this. I don't know. Okay. How is T measured, kids? Tons. I'm just going to write tons down here. Okay. And C is probably going to be measured in dollars, right? Okay. They want to know what does F prime of 4,000 equal. Does that say 200? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put 4,000 right here. And I'm going to put a point up here for F of 4,000. But it doesn't talk about F of 4,000 relating to a value over here on the C-axis or Y-axis, if you will. It's talking about F prime of what? Is it talking about F prime of 4,000? And at F prime of 4,000, my slope is what value? Okay, so I'm going to say slope of this line is 200. So what this means is this, F prime of 4,000 equals 200, whoops, not 2,000, of course, it's 200. Okay, this means when I've gone ahead and extracted how many tons of copper right here, kids? I've extracted 4,000 tons of copper. At that point, how quickly... Is my cost changing per ton at 4,000 tons? Well, the rate of change, or the slope, if you will, or the instantaneous rate of change there is what slope again, kids? 200, okay? So what this is saying is at 4,000 tons of copper, our cost, changing at a rate of how much kids? Two hundred dollars per what? So rate of change. So it's gotta be two hundred dollars per per ton of copper extracted. Guys, understand this. Anytime they ask anything about derivative, it's got to be some kind of rate of change. Specifically, what amount of copper are we talking about? Well, we're talking 4,000 tons. And I say, okay, if F prime of 4,000 is 200, that tells me that once those guys have gotten to 4,000 tons of copper extracted, the cost to me is going up by $200 per ton at that particular moment. Okay, does that make sense? This is tough stuff, but just give me a show of hands. How many are like, yeah, this, I mean, when we talk about it like this, it makes sense. Are you with me right now? Let's try a couple more. Okay, let's try a couple more. I'm going to wait till everybody, I know everybody has. I see a couple pencils still moving, so give me a sign if you're ready to move on to the last page here today. This side of the room good? Middle girls good? Boys over here good? Got it? All right, let's rock. We're on the last page already, aren't we? Ooh. Ooh. You are told that gasoline is flowing through a hose at a constant rate of what? Okay, let me ask you this question. Is 
Sometimes problems like to already give you a rate of change, but you've heard me specifically say over and over and over in chapter two that a rate of change is nothing more than a slope. And you've also heard me say that a slope is nothing more than a, starts with a D, you might have heard it before, it's nothing more than a derivative. Sometimes problems will start out by saying, hey, uh, instead of finding the derivative in a problem, I'm just gonna absolutely give you the one. Oh, constant rate of, isn't this a rate of change right here, guys? Sometimes I'll just start by giving you the derivative right off the bat, okay? Is there a rate of change in this problem? Okay, let me ask this question. Uh, I'm driving down the road at the law by the speed of 55 miles per hour. Is 55 miles per hour a rate of change? I go 55 miles every what? One hour, that's a rate of change, right? That moves me to a different position over time. Wait a second. So you're telling me that anytime we've talked about rate of change in any problems mathematically, that's always been a derivative. The answer is yes. You kind of know these things, all right? You can do some of these things already, okay? It says interpret this rate as a derivative of what? Guys, here's what this means, okay? Let's just talk about gasoline flowing through a hose at a constant rate of gallons per what? Let's just say the number of gallons that are pumped, G, is going to be a function of the number of minutes it takes. Okay? All right? The number of gallons that are pumped are going to be a function of the number of minutes. So if I pump for one minute, how many gallons have gone in there? Okay. Here's the deal then. Since you already know the rate of change, my friend, the derivative g with respect to which variable, kids? M. This is just a fancy way of writing derivative, my friend. The derivative of g with respect to m is equal to what constant rate? What value? How many gallons per minute? How many gallons? What's the change in gallons in this over the change in minutes? It's equal to what value? Okay. I have a question. Can you think of a function? Can you think of a function that if you put the derivative of it, it would just get five in the end? What function could you take the derivative of just to have a derivative of five? Y equals five x. Or in our case, g equals. 5m, right? Okay, the number of gallons that you have in gasoline is equal to 5 gallons times the number of minutes you pump it, right? But the constant rate of change is 5 gallons per minute. So if you set this up kind of like saying, oh, they gave me the rate of change, that was 5, so can I think of some function that I took the derivative of to get this right here? That would be the function, okay? This is going to be a rate of change of 5 gallons for what, friend? For what? Yep. Okay. One more example here, and then I'll leave you alone here for the rest of the week, I promise. Technically, I don't have to leave you alone until... Well, you guys get an extra hour this weekend. But that's technically not until Sunday morning, so technically you don't. Okay, guys, I like this problem right here. Some things I want to throw up there. Uh, I'm going to come back to this idea of inverses with you. Suppose f of t is population of UHS where t is the number of years since when? 1988 being the year that the schools merged. Explain the meaning of the following statements. Okay? It says f of 5 is what value, kids? Okay, so f of 5... How many years have elapsed? Five years, right? Five years have elapsed. That means then, what would five years beyond uh, 1988 be? So the population would be what value? with that? Yeah. All good with that? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, the population in 1993 was? 347. Let's go to the one below that. Let's invert this. You guys remember inverse. Let's take X and Y and do what? Okay, so what's this really saying? When the population was what? That was seven years past what? Which would have made that 1995. You guys agree with that? So could I say the population in 95 was 354? Is that okay with you guys? So the population Now, I've got a typo up here for this last one on the bottom right. But before I get to the right side here, do you understand those two as they relate to the original function and an inverse function? Okay? All right. The one thing I forgot in the bottom right, this should say f inverse prime right here. Okay? f inverse prime. So there should be a little prime after the f inverse. You might want to put that up there. Okay? Let's go to the one at the top right. F prime of 5 equals 6. Now suddenly, guys, is this talking about what's the population in a certain year, or is this asking for something else? And anytime you see prime, the first thing that should jump into your mind is blank of blank. Say it again. Rate of change. Very good. So this is saying five years from when we started. So in 1993, that would be five years after 88, right? What's this 6 mean? And if I sketch the graph of this right here, oh, maybe you're slow to the, maybe you're slow to the bottom. If I had a graph of this right here, our population over time, our population maybe be in P right here. Guys, I have a question. That would be a number of people, right? Or a number of students. How about the x-axis right here? How would I label that? That'd be the time after what? So this would be the number of years after 88, right? Okay. Guys, we're talking about rate of change. We're talking about slope. So the rate of change unit would be the number of students for what? Okay. So this means in five years after 1988 would be when? So in 1993, UHS population was changing at a rate of Six people per what? Per year. Okay, is it okay to say changing at a rate of six students per year? Mm -hmm. I grow up every day. Okay, here's your test. Let's see how good you do here. Guys, you were really good about saying, oh, f of 5, population's 347 in 93. Oh, inverse. Doesn't matter, population's 354 in 1995. This one says, oh, five years after 88, 1993, we were changing at this rate. Yeah. Anybody want to take a stab at the inverse prime? Uh, I love it. Say that again louder, Nate. But 12 is a year, that would have made it in 2000. Oh. <laughs> Argue with me. You're right, Nate. Argue oh. me. It's a what? It's an inverse. So it's like the 9 and 12. This is kind of like saying. They swapped. This is like saying yeah. f prime of. This is like saying f prime of 9 is equal to what, kids? That's like saying f prime of 9 is equal to 12 if we go back to the original. Yeah. So that means in what year again, Nate? 1997. So in 1997, that's nine years after 88, right? Yeah. Yeah. Population of UHS was changing at what rate? Twelve. Any rank was increasing by 12 people per year? I write it this way: increasing. I 
always like to throw this in here because I know if I'm dealing with a derivative, I always like to throw the phrase in at a rate of, and if we're talking about rate of change, I like to have somewhere in there at a rate of, at a rate of what? We can only spell students for what? Guys, mess around with page 115, see what you can get done there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop there and give you a few minutes to decompress here. And um, I want to make sure everybody has this before I stop. Kids, what questions do you have for me right now? <laughs> Who did? Shocker. Uh,